All praise to the most high God. Uh, tonight's topic is, is I'm continuing on the series that I've been, we've been going over, the characteristics of a simp. Actually, I want to uh, change that topic, all right? Um, don't put the characteristics of a simp. Put the, de the death cycle of a simp. Not the life cycle, because it would imply that the simp has life in him. No, no, a simp don't have life in him. So the death cycle of a simp. The death cycle of a simp. This is the third cycle. This is the third death cycle of a simp. Okay, a simp is a drama king. A simp is a drama king. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, all right? Sirach 33, verse 5. The simp likes drama. That's a simp. You understand? That's another, that's another, what well, I say, characteristic. Okay, Sirach 33, verse 5. Let's start there. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33. Verses 5. Read. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Mm -hmm. And his thoughts are like a rolling X. X Excel tree. Excel. Excel tree. Read that again. The book, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 5. Mm -hmm. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Read. And his thoughts are like a rolling Excel tree. So now it says the heart of the foolish, the heart of the foolish. Remember, we went over the heart, the mind, the mind of the foolish. Watch this, hold this. Give me that in First Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 13 it says the heart of the foolish. Okay, the heart of the foolish. Watch this. First book of Samuel. Chapter 13, verses 13. Read. And someone said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Mm -hmm. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which Read. he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have for now would the Lord have established a kingdom upon Israel forever. So now this is Samuel, the prophet Samuel is telling Saul, listen, you have done foolishly. You understand? That was a simple move that you've made. Thou has not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God. You understand? So a, a mind that is foolish is a mind that doesn't keep God's commandments. That mind has no sense. So go back to where was that now? Sirach 33 verse 5 again. The book of, the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 verse 5. Read. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Mm -hmm. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. So it says the heart of the foolish, meaning the heart of a simp, the mind of a simp. What makes a simp a simp? A simp don't keep God's commandments because God, God's commandments gives you what? They give you sense. You understand that? Give me that in Nehemiah 8 verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 8. And so, so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sins. And did what? And gave the sins. And gave the sins. So they gave the people the sins out of what? Out of the law of God distinctly. Go ahead. And caused them to understand the reading. You see that thing? Cause them to understand the things that are written in this book. So what is Nehemiah teaching us? The Lord is teaching us through Nehemiah that, listen, if you want to have sense, you must keep God's commandments. When you keep God's commandments, you will have understanding of the things that are written. When you read, you'll have understanding because you're keeping God's commandments and because the laws of God are taught to you. You understand? Go back to where was that now? The... The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 5. Mm -hmm. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. So now the mind of a simp, because the mind of a simp is a mind that doesn't have sense. is a mind that doesn't have God's laws. 
It says it's like a what? It's like a cartwheel. You see, you know, you ever seen a cartwheel? Uh, you ever seen a cart that is is been pulled by donkeys or horses? You understand? It's made of wood. So on the side, you see these two wheels. You understand? Those those two wheels right there, that's a cartwheel. Okay, come on. It says it's like it's like what? It's like a cartwheel. Read. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. The axle tree is a what? Is a bar that holds the two cartwheels together. You understand? The 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 axle tree is a bar that holds the two cartwheels together. When a, the cart sits on the axle tree, you understand? And is supported by what? By the two cartwheels on either side. So it says the mind of a fool is like that. Meaning what? It's unstable. The mind of a fool, the mind of a simp is unstable because a drama king is very unstable, very emotional, always offended. You understand? That's a drama queen. Mm, I guess that's a nice ring to it because he's a woman. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me that in Isaiah 3 and 12. Mm, he's a woman. So he's a drama queen. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to put it. He is a drama queen. Okay? Give me that thing. Isaiah 3 verse 12. Watch this. The book of Isaiah 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Read. And women rule over them. And what? Women rule over them. And women rule over them, meaning women rule over their thoughts. They are not ruled by the Most High God. They are not ruled by the laws, statutes, and commandments that are written in this book on how to be a man. Mm -mm. Their thought process is ruled over by a woman. Read that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are the oppressors, and mm -hmm. women rule over them. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy Read. the way of thy paths. Meaning what? The way of their path, the path to manhood. You understand? The woman, because the woman is the one that is ruling over a simp, because the mind of a simp is ruled over a, by a woman. Anything and everything he does is motivated directly or indirectly, you understand, by a woman that is ruling and ruling over him and leading him. Okay? The, because his mind, he doesn't have the mind of the most high. He's got the mind of a woman. So he's a simp. Because women, they go through emotions the whole day, up, down, up, down. He's like that. Every day of his life is like he's on his, he's on his menstrual cycles. You understand? It's like he's on his periods. Mood swings. He's moody. A drama king, a drama queen, he's moody. Very moody. You understand? No smile. He's very emotional. Easily offended. You understand? Create an argument out of everything. Mm -hmm. You women can attest to that. Okay, go back to where he was at. Sarak 33 verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes 33 verse 5. The mm -hmm. heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Right? And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. His thoughts, his thoughts. So he's letting you know that, because remember it says the heart of the foolish, his mind don't keep God's commandments. So therefore, his mind doesn't have sense. Then it says, and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree, unstable. You understand? He's not, he doesn't have discipline in his mind. Whenever he speaks, give me that in Sarak 27. Sarak 20, Sarak 28. Sarak, I mean, Sarak 21 verse 18. Sarak 21 verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 28 verse 19. Well is he that is defended from it. And hath not passed through the venom thereof. Who hath not thrown the yoke thereof. Nor had been found in the bands. Okay, Soldier John, can you read that again? Sarah 21, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. 21, verses 18. Come on. 
as is the house that is destroyed. Mm -hmm. So is wisdom to a fool. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. You see that thing? It doesn't have sense. Remember, we get sense from the laws of God. God's laws, according to Nehemiah 18, 8, they give you sense. So a simp, a simp, a simp, is a, it says what? And a simp's knowledge is what? Is talk without sense. So he doesn't have order. He doesn't have law. He doesn't have discipline in his thought process. So that's why it says it's like talk without sense. Read it again, verse 18. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 18. Come on. As is a house that is destroyed, mm -hmm. so is wisdom to a fool. So is what? And so is wisdom to a fool. So is wisdom to a fool. Wisdom to a fool. Give me that in Sarah 19. Sarah chapter 19 and verse 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 20. They that fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. You see and that thing? So wisdom, wisdom is the subject. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Come on. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. Is the what? Performance of the law is the performance of the law so wisdom is when you perform meaning apply the laws of god read and the knowledge of his omnipotency you see because the lord the lord the most High god's knowledge it transcends time you understand go back to where he was at now Sarah 21 verse 18 the book of ecclesiasticus 21 verses 18 read as is a house that is destroyed, mm -hmm. so is wisdom to a fool. Because wisdom will destroy a fool. Because he's not going to value that wisdom. Sense is foolishness unto him. That's why so, so is wisdom to a fool. Come on. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. And the knowledge of the unwise. What makes the fool to be unwise? Lack of knowing God's commandments. So he, everything he speaks is the things that are coming out of his mouth is talk without sense. Meaning what? His conversation is not filtered by God's commandments. You understand? His conversation, everything he says is filtered by his own lusts. You understand? Which is what makes him so unstable. Which was makes him a drama queen. Watch this. Sarah 27 verse 11. Ecclesiasticus 27 verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 11. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. Stop right there. Always. It says, is what? Always with wisdom. Always with wisdom. Come on. Verse 11 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 11. The mm -hmm. discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. No, sometimes. Is always with wisdom is always, always with wisdom, meaning what? The character of a godly man, that, that's what means discourse. The character of a godly man is always with wisdom, meaning what? He's always in the spirit. Okay, come on. But a simp, a drama queen is not like that. Read. But a fool changes as the moon. That's the key right there. A fool changes as the moon. You see that thing? That's the mind of a drama queen. A drama queen changes as the moon. Why is he always changed? Because he's always going through what? Emotions. He's always going through what? The, he's, he's always going through spats of emotions. You understand? Because he was offended last night, yesterday, whenever. Whenever such and such said this and that, especially the woman. The woman is the one that is always can get the, 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 the woman, a Jezebel woman, will, will pop out a drama queen. That's her job because she molds him into a, a drama queen, just like herself. She's the female, she's the male version of her. So a drama queen, the man is a male version of the Jezebel, of the real drama, of the Jezebel. The Jezebel woman will produce people like her. When it comes to the man, she will produce a male equivalent of her. 
You understand? So a drama queen is one that is raised by his mother. Okay? They submit to the will of the woman. Read that again. Verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 27, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The root cause of a godly man is always with wisdom. But a fool changes as the moon. But the fool changes as the moon. is like a what? A rolling axle tree. A cartwheel. That's his thought process. You understand? There's no stability in his mind. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. Okay? Give me Proverbs. I believe I didn't write down. So let me let, look at it. I think it's 27. Proverbs 24 verse 21. Let me write it down. Proverbs 24 verse 21. Read that. The book of Proverbs 24 verse 21. Read. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King. Mm -hmm. and meddle not with them that are given to change. You see that thing? It says meddle not with them that are given to change. Okay? Like a rolling axle tree. His thoughts, his mind, his, his mind is like a cartwheel. His thought process is like a rolling axle tree. There's no stability in his thought process. You understand? That's why there's always drama surrounding him. That's why wherever he as simp goes, there's always drama. When he leaves, he leaves drama. When he arrives, give him time, he will cause drama also. That's a simp. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 22, verse 14. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, and verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verses 14. Read. Sand and salt. You know what? Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. You know what? Hmm. Let me see, let me see. Give me Sirach 21, 14 first. Sirach 21, 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 14. Read. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Read. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. As long as he liveth. So it says the inner parts of a fool, meaning his mind, that's the inner part. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. You understand? You, you cannot hold no knowledge because when you try to correct him, he's not going to receive the knowledge or the correction or the counsel. No, 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 no. They know better. They are the genius. You can't tell them nothing. You understand? Guess what? When they, when now, now imagine he's married now. Okay? You have a simp who is a drama queen. He is married. The wife says, babe, X, Y, and Z, you understand, is not okay. Guess what the simp will do? The simp will be offended. You understand? The simp is going to be offended because even the wife is not going to be able to show him, say, babe, but you know, this one, mm, you know, this one is not correct, my love. So on is my Lord, so on and so forth. No, he's not going to take it like that. You understand? He's very short-fused. He can't, he can't be told nothing. You understand? So the wife now knows how to fine tune him or not. And the wife can fine tune you how, based on how she wants. When, you, when a woman discovers that you are a drama queen, she will fine tune you. You will dance to her tune. And her tune is what? Is the emotions. Because she's emotional. Guess what? Now she realizes, mm, I've got an emotional bundle of, not joy, a bundle of something here. Guess what? Mm, now I have somebody that I can, I have a puppet now that I can control. Simps don't, they don't mind that. Simps are okay with that. In fact, that's what they look for. You understand? Because he's just like his mother. Okay. Read again, verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 14. The mm. inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Read. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. He is not going to hold no knowledge. You can't, you can't guide him and advise him. And can't you can't. Even if they make it seem they take the cut, they will not receive it. But what I mean by that, they're not going to apply it. Okay? So now the simp is married. Guess what? And the sister has got sense. Guess what? That's even, if that's going to even, it's going to be a worse situation because 
Now, if the sister opens her mouth in wisdom, according to Proverbs 31, 26, guess what's going to happen? He's going to see, he's going to like, he's going to realize that this woman has more sense than I am. And because of that, guess what? He's going to create an issue out of everything to mask the fact that the woman has more sense than he, he, he does. Instead of saying, you know what? Let me get the sense. Let me apply the script. You're not going to do that though. Okay. Now give me Sarah 22 now. Verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 14. Read. What is heavier than lead? Lead, lead, lead. Lead is a heavy metal. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 14. What is heavier than lead? What is heavier than lead? The question is posed. Go ahead. And what is the name thereof? of mm -hmm. but the fool? You see that thing? It says a fool because lead is a heavy metal. You understand? So it says, what is heavier than lead? What is the name thereof? And he's going to tell you the name of something that is heavier than lead. A fool. A fool's mind, a fool's thoughts is what? Is heavier than lead. Because it's got no sense. So they will drain you out. So sisters, when you are married to a simp, that is a drama queen, he's going to drain you. He's going to quench your spirit. He's going to drain you. He's going, to exhaust, he's going to exhaust you. Understand that thing. Read on. Sand and salt. Now he's giving, he's giving you other, met, other minerals. You understand? That is heavier than the mind of a fool. Read that part again. Read verse 14 and 15 together. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 14. Read. What is heavier than lay? Mm -hmm. And what is the name thereof part of a fool? But a fool, come on, sand and salt, mm -hmm. and a mass of iron, and a mass, is... a mass of iron. So it says, sand is heavier than a fool, and salt is heavier than a fool, and a mass of iron is heavy. These are minerals and metals here. Okay, come on, sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to pay. That's some heavy stuff. That's listen. You ever seen these trucks that transport, they do export and import, they be transporting salt, sand, you understand? Metals, heavy metals like iron and lead. You get huge trucks that be carrying that. You ever seen those trucks that they've got two, they've got um, they've got two trailers. They've been carrying concrete and all that. That thing is heavy. You understand? Thousands and thousands of tons on that thing. He says, no, 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 no. That's light compared to the mind of a fool. The mind of a drama queen. It's heavier. It's going to drain. It's going to wear you out. It's going to wear your spirit out. Read that again. Verse 15. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 15. Sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to pay. Read. Than a man without understanding. That's heavy right there. Than a man that is without understanding because guess what? His mind is like a broken vessel. He can hold no knowledge as long as he lives it. That's the, that's the, mind, that's the mind frame of a, of a drama queen. Okay? It says, sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to bear. I Meaning it's easier to carry those heavy stuff than a man void of, than a man without understanding. He don't keep the commandments. He is without sense. So everything that's coming out of his mouth is what? Is senseless. Okay, watch this. Give me Proverbs 27 verse 3. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 3. The book of Proverbs 27 verse 3. Come on. A stone is heavy. Mm-hmm. And the sand weighty. And the sand weighty. So Serag is saying the same thing that King Solomon is saying here. Read that again. The book of the book of Proverbs 27, verse 4, verse 3. A stone is heavy, mm -hmm. and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. That's some heavy stuff, but the fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Because he's going out of his way to cause drama. You understand? 
you can be here you are you are married you could be having a simple conversation with a simp you understand a simp is gonna read too much into everything that's a simp that's a drama queen you understand he doesn't filter things that are being said with the scriptures you see that's a different ball game yes because as remember the mind frame of a simp does not have what does not have the sense where do you get the sense from the laws of god he don't see things spiritual mm -mm. everything is fleshly sensual emotional you understand read that again and a simp a drama queen they like to guilt trip mm -hmm. that's their character they would like to guilt trip you they, they are the ones they are those that when you say i'm sorry okay no babe my lord i'm sorry my lord for such and such guess what no they're not going to take the apology apology not accepted and guess what now everyone in the house they are just walking you are just walking around in the house one has not accepted your apology now the sister is sitting right there they're walking on eggshells in the house now because this drama queen right here is emotional he don't he, he's not going to take the apology so we can move on no 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 he like to hold things he like to hold grudges that's the mind that's the mind frame of a drama queen okay aka a simp read that again verse three come on proverbs 27 verse three the book of proverbs 27 verse three a stone is heavy and the sand weighty but a fool's mm -hmm. wrath is heavier than them both a fool's wrath is heavier than them both you understand a fool's wrath because a fool's wrath is outside the outside of the bounds of anger. This that anger, this anger, this particular anger right here, it's 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 got levels to it. You understand? It's it's is 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 filled with tantrums and and the 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 spirits of revenge. They always want to revenge. They want to get back at you. They want to get back. That's the mindset of a simp. A drama queen is like that. They always want to get back at you. You do something wrong to them, they want to get back at you. That's a simp. Okay, that's a drama queen. Because they are not satisfied when there's no drama. That's how they think. They are not satisfied. When there's no drama, they are not satisfied. They will create one if none exists. Watch this. Give me Sarah 32 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verses 15. Read. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. But the that hypocrite thing? will he be that offended seeketh, therewith. Hold on. Come on, come on. I need you to stay with me. Read that again, verse 15. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 15. Read. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Stop right there. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Because if you seek the laws of God, you go after God's commandments, you're going to be filled with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because that's the fruit that the laws of God that is planted in you will bring forth. Go ahead. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. You see that thing right there? But the hypocrite will be offended. Because guess what? A drama queen is always offended because he's a hypocrite. Okay. Because guess what? Remember now, don't forget yesterday's class, a drama, a, a simp, one of the character, one of the death cycle character of a simp is what? He's a dreamer. So he will, he will sell you the moon, the stars, and the holy, and the, the fair heaven. Okay? Now, as a sister now, now you are married to the simp. Now you'll be asking him. So you said two years ago, such and such was going to happen. So what's happening with that? Now, when you bring when you bring those things to his remembrance, guess what? He's gonna he's gonna come up with excuses. He's gonna curse you out. He's gonna just make himself mad. He's gonna just be upset out of out of all of a sudden. Now he's upset, and he's, he's upset is gonna lead to an argument, and the argument now leads to what? Yangala. That's what they do. Yangala. He separates himself. Now, as the sister, you have to now be calling him and apologizing. I'm sorry, my Lord, I didn't mean to offend you. You know, it didn't come out right. Now you have to be what? You have to be, you have to be battering the simp. 
You understand? That's a toxic remarriage. Because if you marry to a simp, you must know you are now married to a what? You're, you're, you, he's going to drain the life out of you. Okay? Read that again. Verse 15. Ecclesiastes 32, verse 15. Mm -hmm. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. Read. But the hypocrites will be offended thereat. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Offended at what? Because you're coming with sense. You're coming with law and order. So that what? To set things in order. In terms of the way we think, how we make decisions, how we move forward as a family, as a body. Mm -mm, a sin don't think like that. Okay? Now give me Sirach 33 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes 33 verse 2. Mm -hmm. A wise man hated not the law. A wise man does what? Hated not the law. A wise man hateth not the law, meaning what? He loves the laws of God. He and he loves the correction that comes with it, the order that it brings in his mind. Read. But he that is an hypocrite, but he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. You see that thing? He that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Meaning what? He's unstable. He's being tossed to and fro. Give me that in Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22. Verse 17. Watch this. He that is an hypocrite is like a ship in a storm. Let's see what happens when a ship is being tossed to and fro. Isaiah 22. Verse 17. Watch this. The book of Isaiah 22. Verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. Read. And will surely cover thee. Come on. He will surely violently toss and turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. You see that part right there? It says he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. That goes into what? When we went when, 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 during the time, during the transatlantic, during the sub-Sahara, during the Silk Road. Because we were what? We were being violent, violently tossed to and fro at sea by the super storms and all of that, as we are being transported, our forefathers being transported to the Americas, to North, Central, and South, to China and India, and so forth. Read that part again. He will surely turn and toss thee like a ball into no, no, a large no. country. No, no, you are skipping words here. Read that part again. The book of Isaiah 22, verse 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Read. They shall thou die. You see that thing? They shall thou die. Because guess what? When you read the history, our forefathers and foremothers, they were dropped, they were what? They were being killed on the ship as they were what? Going across the seas, the Atlantic. You understand the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean and so forth. So it says, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Now, Go back to where was that now? I'm giving this as an example. Go back to Sarak 33 verse 2 again. The book of Ecclesiastes 33 verse 2. Mm -hmm. A wise man hated not the law. Read. But, but he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. You see that thing? He that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Because a ship, when it's in a storm, is what is violently being tossed, turned, turned, and tossed like a ball. That's his mind. His mind is filled with violence. You understand? Is tossed, is tossed to and fro because he's got unstable thoughts. So now imagine being married to that. And now you cannot say, mm -mm, I don't want him no more. No, no, she's yours, sister. You understand? She's yours now. There's no take backs. Now imagine waking up every day for the rest of your life with this simp right here. Because you didn't prove this Negro. He was a slick nig. Okay? Read that part again, verse 18 again. No, no, verse 3, verse, verse 2 again. I'm sorry, I'm still looking at Isaiah. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes 33, verse 2. Read. A wise man hated not the law. Mm -hmm. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. He's as a ship in a storm. He's not. Un he's unstable. You understand? He is unstable. 
So remember, he's a dreamer, okay? And not only that, he's a drama queen. So when you come to him about the things he tells you that he's going to do, the things that he's going to do for you and all of that, as you grow as a family and all that, as a marriage, as a married couple, guess what? Because you're going to bring these things to him and say, my Lord, such and such, such and such on this day, X, Y, and Z. And when you bring those things to him, guess what? His mind frame, he's going to be offended because he's a dreamer. So he dreams, but he doesn't do nothing about his dreams. Okay, so he's unrealistic. He lives in a fairy world and he expects you to live in the same fairy world that he lives in. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 7, 23. Luke chapter 7, verse 23. Come on, come on. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 23. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Read it again. The book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see, this is Christ speaking. This is in the red letters. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So the hypocrite is not blessed. The hypocrite is cursed. His mind frame, his thought process is messed up. He's bugged up. He's bugged out. You understand? Just imagine, instead of a brain, there's cockroaches in his head. Bugs, bugged out. That's what it means to be bugged out. The brain is, is absent, and inside the head, this, 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 this physical bone, guess what's in there? Just roaches. You understand? Read that part again. Verse 23. The book of Luke chapter 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So you see that thing? Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The hypocrite will be offended therein. You understand? And is as a ship in a storm. That's how he is offended. He, he, look at the, the level of, of offense that comes upon his mind. He's so offended that he's gonna behave like a sheep in a storm. That's what it means, that's what Sirach is saying. The hypocrite will be offended. Now Sirach is explained. Go back to Sirach 33 verse two again. Go back there. Don't close it, don't close it up. You see there's two different Bibles. So don't close it up, don't close these precepts. It's gonna be easy for you to navigate these things. Sirach 33 verse two, watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A wise man hated not the law. Read. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. You see that thing? It says, but he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Meaning the level of his offense, you understand, is what? He behaves like a ship that is in a storm. He's tossed to and fro. Meaning he behaves out of character. Why? Because he's emotional. You understand? When you hit a nerve, you really see how a drama queen will behave himself. He'll behave like a ship in a storm, violently. They become so emotional, they can even, because a simp is violent. A simp is violent. A simp is violent. A simp will emotionally do what? A simp will emotionally abuse you. A simp will physically abuse you. Because Every decision he makes is to spite. That's how he thinks. That's how he simp thinks. In his mind, he's always, I want to revenge. I want to also even the score. How am I going to even the score? He's going to do something simple. You understand? That is going to cause more harm than good. That's how he simp thinks. Because you're offending him, he's going to act out of character just to get back at you. That's a simp. Listen, that type of a character, he will drain you out. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 8. Luke 8, 22. Let's start there. I'm, pre, I'm, gonna, I'm going over here. Uh, based on what, what, what we just read. When it says it's like a, it's, it's a ship in a storm. Luke 8, 22. Watch this. Mm-hmm. 
the book of Luke, chapter 8, verses 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto mm -hmm. them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth. So now they launched forth, we understand, when in a ship with his disciples. This is Christ speaking now. And Christ is traveling with his disciples. Watch this. Come on. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. They were what? In jeopardy. They, come on. I need you to, call, to read the right stuff here. And were in jeopardy. Come on. What's going on with you? Read verse 23 again. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 23. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And they came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they were in jeopardy. So now, remember that now there's a storm or at sea now. There's a storm at sea. And they says they were, they were filled with water because of what? Because of the violence of the storm. And were in jeopardy, meaning in danger. So guess what? The behavior of a, of, 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 of a simp, a drama queen, when he's offended, he behaves like this. He's as a ship in a storm. You're going to be in jeopardy. You are in danger because of what? You don't know how he's going to behave. He's unstable as water. Okay, come on. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. And the raging on the water. And, and the what? Ceased. Wait, and wait, wait. And, uh -huh, read that part again. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the uh -huh. raging of the water. You see that thing? It says, then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. Because that's how the hypocrite is. The hypocrite is offended because he's a drama queen. Okay? Everything offends him. It doesn't matter whether directly or indirectly, he's always offended. You see that thing? It says he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. Because guess what? His offense, he becomes enraged. So he's got rage. So the Lord is giving you the characteristics of a simp. One of those characteristics is what? He's a drama queen. He's filled with rage. So when, you, when he gets offended about dumb stuff, what, what, what do you think he's going to do to quench his rage? What do you think he's going to do? He's going to take all that rage out on you. And there's no telling what he's going to do because he's driven by emotion because he's a simp. You understand that? Watch this. Go back to Sarak now. 33 verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33 verse 2. A wise man hated not the law. Mm -hmm. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Is as a ship in a storm. Now, go to Sarag. Um, no, no, give me Luke. Go back to Luke. Go back to Luke 7.23. Let's go back there. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 23. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So Sarag explained the offense. Sirach explained the offense. Remember, it says, but the hypocrite, you understand, the hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Remember what we read in Sirach 32, verse 15. It says, he that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith, but the hypocrite will be offended thereat. So Sirach in Sirach 33, verse 2, is giving you the extent of the offense, how he's going to be offended, and how he's going to behave or conduct himself when he's offended. He's going to be, he's, because he's filled with rage. He's going to behave like a ship in a storm. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Mark chapter 4. Mark 4, verse 14. Mark 4, 14. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 4. Verses 14. Read. The sower soweth the word. Mm -hmm. Read that again. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 14. 
The mm -hmm. sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. Christ is the sower. He sows the word in us. Jump down to verse 17 now. You know, no? Verse 16. Read verse 16 for me. No, no. Verse 17. And That's what I want. Verse 17. Read verse 17. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And have no root in themselves. Read. And so endure, but for a time. Come on. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, for the what? For the word's sake. For the word's sake. For the word's sake. Because now you are challenging them on their beliefs. Do you really believe this? And how do you challenge them? Okay. Yes. You're saying you are the head of the house. Okay. Let's see if you are applying what they say. Because your wife is going to deal with you according to the scriptures. If she's a wise woman, she will deal with you according to the scripts. We're not talking about a sister that, yes, she's dealing with you according to the scripts, but she's disrespectful. No, we're not talking about that black ashy demon. We're talking about the sister that will bring the scriptures out, you understand, based on the things that are going on. She will what? She will lean on the Bible to resolve conflicts that arise in the marriage. You understand? But the hypocrite will be offended there. You understand? They will be offended. They will take offense to that. Instead of realizing that your wife is your last line of defense, when you go off, she's supposed to what? Help you to pull you back in and say, babe, look what the scripture says. The scripture says X, Y, and Z. You're supposed to be the last line of defense in that house. That's how you build your house up as a sister. You understand? Read that again. Verse 17. The book of Mark chapter 4, verse 17. And have no root in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so endure, but for a time. Read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Read. Immediately, they are offended. Immediately, they are offended. You understand? Immediately, they are offended. Why? Because they are not rooted and grounded in the scripts. Because how can, he, how can a simp be rooted and grounded? A simp, a simp, his mind is always thinking about evil and foolish things. That's how he thinks. He, he is ruled by his emotions. You understand? He's ruled by his emotions. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of First Kings. Let's get some examples. No, 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 no. Before we get that, before we get that. Read verse 17 again for me. Somewhere I want to go. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 17. Mm -hmm. And have no root in themselves. Come on. And so endure but for a time. Read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Immediately they are offended. Watch this. Give me the book of Jude. Okay. Give me Jude. Start at verse 16. I'm going to show you the characteristic of a simp. That is a drama quest. That's another character. Being a, he's a drama queen. Watch this. Start at verse... 16. We're going to start at verse 16. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. They are murmurs. No, 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 no. Read that again. Read it right. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. These are murmurs. These are what? Murmurs. A drama queen is always complaining about something. A drama queen, they complain. What are they murmuring against? They murmur against the counsel that goes out. They murmur against the things that we teach in the scriptures. Because why? Like I mentioned, I gave an example. As, as, as the mind of a simp, you understand? Because he's a drama queen, he's ruled by the coochie, you understand? And he's a dreamer. He does not have real, realism in his mind. And he's a drama queen. He's unstable in his thought process. So now because he worships the coochie, and he worships the, the head attached to this coochie, guess what? When we correct the sisters, he's going to be the first one to speak up. And if he don't, he don't speak up, he's going to act out. Either way, yes, simple, never disappoint. You understand? Because they cannot hold no water. They don't know how to discipline themselves. Read that part again. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. These are murmurs. These are murmurs. Read on. 
Complainers. Complainers. Read on. Walking after their own lusts. Walking after their own lusts. What are those lusts? The coochie. You understand? Read. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words. You see that part right there? And their mouth, their mouth speak, speaketh great swelling words. They boast. Because he's a dreamer. Don't forget the topic now. Don't fall off the horse now. It says, their mouth speaketh great swelling words because they say, but they do not. They be promising you, sisters, the moon, the stars, heaven, you understand? This outer space, yeah. They be promising all those things. They want to do none of them. When you challenge them, when you check, when you bring those things up, guess what? They are going to be offended. And they're, they're, at the level of their offense, they are going to be like a ship in a storm because they are filled with rage now. They're going to take that rage out on you. They might actually punch you in the face. You understand? Okay, come on. These are murmurs and complainers walking after their own lusts mm -hmm. and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Read. Really? Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They have men's person in admiration. They don't admire the, they don't admire, admire our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -mm. They have men's person in admiration because of advantage. What is the advantage they have? The advantage they have is what? Is the dreams they are selling you because in their minds, the dream they are selling you is what is, is, is an advantage unto those that are hearing these dreams that he's telling you. Who's the subject? The sister. The sister is a subject. Now you are dealing with a drama queen. A drama queen will sell you dreams, pipe dreams, which they have no intention of achieving those dreams or achieving those goals, rather. Because they don't have goals, they have dreams. A goal has, an, has a deadline. A dream is open-ended. You understand? And sis, simple sisters, they fall for that stuff. Next verse, come on. Come but on, verse 17. The book of Jude, chapter 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. How that they told you they should be mockers in the last time. They should be what? Mock, how they told you that they should be mockers in the last time. He says how that they told you that they should be mockers in the last time. Because mock mockers are complainers and murmur, and they, they murmur, they complain, they are walking after their own lusts. Those are mockers. What are they mocking? The laws of God. So when you bring them the scriptures, they want to mock you based on what you are saying. They want to ridicule what you are saying. They wanna, they're going to make a mockery out of you showing them the right way. And they know what you're saying is correct, but they're going to make a mockery out of it because what? This is a child you are dealing with here. You're not dealing with a man. A simp is not a man, he's a child. Okay? Read that again, verse 18. The book of Jude, verse 18. How that they told you they should be mockers in the last time. Read. Who shall walk after their own ungodly lusts. Mm -hmm. Come on. These be they who separate themselves. They do what? Separate themselves. These be they who separate themselves. They separate themselves. Hmm. Keep reading. Sensual. Having not the spirit. Read verse 19 again. The book of Jude chapter 1 verse 19. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. Having not the spirit. So now what you want to notice is that is as these be they who separate themselves, the memorers, the complainers, you understand? The ungodly, because a drama queen, he's, a, he's, he's ungodly. He doesn't have sense. But the point here is as these be they who separate themselves. What happens when they become offended? They separate themselves. You see that thing? When, they, when a simp, a drama queen is because the drama queen He's always offended because he's running on emotions. He's emotional. You understand? He's emotional. He's soft. He's effeminate. So now when you say something, 
he is always he offended at everything. He just want to cry for everything. So he says, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, meaning emotional, having not the spirit, having not the sense. He doesn't, he doesn't have any sense. He cannot hold no water. He's a broken vessel. So guess what? Scenario time. Now you are having, you are having a disagreement with your Lord, okay? Because he's an emotional wreck, okay, he's emotional, he's sensual, he doesn't have sense, he doesn't have the spirit of Christ in him, guess what? Once he becomes offended, the way he's going to behave, he's going to, the tantrum, the first tantrum he will throw, he's not going to speak to you. When you call him, he's not going to answer the phone. He leaves the house, you call him, he don't answer the phone. You send SMSs, he don't respond. He don't say nothing. The whole day, you know what he's doing? He's, 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 they call it emotional blackmail. That's emotional abuse. He will emotionally abuse you. You understand? He is going to quench and vex your spirit. That's a drama queen. That's a simp. The whole day you'll be trying to call him. You'll be phoning him. You'll be sending texts. Please call whatever you can get. Try to get reach, of, to get, to reach him to be the bigger woman. Guess what? He's just going to look at them. He's, he's, he'll go as far as to switch off his phone. Then he's going to come later, hours later, when he comes home. And the whole day you'll be worried. Now, emotionally, he's, what is he doing? He's emotionally just destroying you. By the time he arrives home, guess who? You, because you, be, you, you want to make peace. He, that's what he wants. He wants you to beg. For, he wants you to beg for, for there to be peace in the house. That's a drama queen for you. You understand? Read again, verse 19. Come on. That's my bearing, sir. How did you lose your bearing? I mean, we never left the script. Come on, I need you to focus. Jude, verse 19. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. You see that thing? These be they who separate themselves. He will, but we are ngala, unwa ngala. You understand? He will do exactly that. Uzo ngala, uzo ngalela. He goes, he disappears, you know, for hours and he comes back. Then when he comes back, guess what? You're going to be apologizing to the Negro, the slick nig. You must apologize because here's what Christ said. Give me Matthew 5. Okay, Matthew chapter 5. And verse, let me see. Give me Matthew 5 verse 9. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, mm -hmm. for they shall be called the children of God. You see what he's saying? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So he knows that you're going to now, at that point, guess what you, you just want peace. You don't want to, let's say, my Lord, I'm tired of fighting. I don't know. Let's, that's exactly what he wants. But really, has the pro problem been resolved? Is his simplicity being, being what? Being patched out of his spirit? No. He's still a simp. Because he's weak. This is a weak mealy mouse brother who pink makes him cry. You understand? And put on a and put on a and put on a what he when he sleeps, he, he wraps around himself with a pillow. You understand? He puts a pillow between his legs. That's how a simp sleeps. You understand? Just like that. Watch this. Give me now. Let's get some examples. Okay. Watch this. Give me the book of first kings. The book of first kings 21. We're gonna start at verse 1. I'm going to give you an example of a simp. You understand? First Kings. He says, these be they who separate themselves. Right? Sensual. And having not the spirit. Watch this. First Kings 21. Let's start at verse 1. First book of Kings chapter 21. Verse 21. Verse 1. No, no. 20, 21 verse 1. Come on. I need you to focus. First book of Kings chapter 21 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the, Jez the, Jezre 
the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Meaning what? They were adjacent. They were next to one another. You understand? It says hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So now you've got Naboth, who has a vineyard, and Ahab, the king of Samaria, wants the vineyard of Naboth. Go ahead. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for, my go for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it money. No, 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 no. Come on. What are you reading? Read verse 2 again. First book of Kings chapter 21 verse 2. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. So now, now what you, what you want to notice with this verse right here, Ahab was a slick nig. Ahab was a slick nig. So you see what he's trying to do? He's trying to defraud his neighbor here. He's trying, he's trying to defraud his neighbor. Because guess what? He says that I may have it for a garden of herbs. Why? Because what was Naboth, Naboth doing with his vineyard? He was taking care of his vineyard. You understand? He was plowing. He was growing crops and all of that. And the Lord was blessing this brother. You understand? So that's why it says that I may have it for a garden of herbs. Because that's what Naboth was doing with it. He, were, he planted herbs and so forth. Crops. To take care of his family. So Ahab, he's thinking, he says, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. I'm going to give you something better. So if you want to give him something better, hold on. Why don't you go and get the better that you can get for Nabat? Because if there's something else out there that is better than what I have, why, why be why interested in my vineyard? You see that thing? Why is, why is, why is Ahab interested in Naboth's vineyard if he can get a better one than this one? Think about it. Okay. He says, I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Mm. Ahab was a slick nig. And our forefather Naboth was able to see this thing. You understand? Because Ahab was covetous. Read on. Verse 3. And Naboth said to Ahab, uh -huh. The Lord forbid me. What did he say? The Lord forbid me. Mm -hmm. He says, the Lord forbid me. Meaning the most high God will not allow me to do this thing because this is an inheritance. Read on. The Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. You see that thing? Because guess what? His forefathers left him that vineyard so he can take care of himself and his family. And the children, when he dies, guess what? They will also inherit the vineyard and take care of themselves and their families. So Ahab was a selfish, slick nick. Go ahead. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because Stop right of the there. word. Mm, wait, 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 wait. Let's read that slow. Read verse 4 again now. First book of Kings chapter 21 verse 4. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Mm -hmm. Read. Because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. So now Naboth spoke to Ahab like a man. You understand? He gave him, he spoke to him like a man does. So now it says Ahab was what? What was Ahab's? What, how did Ahab be, behave himself after he received? The response from Naboth. Read verse 4 again. First book of Kings chapter 21 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. You see that thing? He came into his house heavy and displeased. Because guess what? He's emotional. He's a drama queen. 
He he was expect what was he expecting? All this. Give me Luke 731. We coming back here. Let me show you the character of Ahab. You know, a drama queen is a child. You understand? A drama queen is a child. Understand that. Luke 731. The book of Luke chapter 7, verses 31. Come on. And the Lord said, Where unto them shall I liken the men of this generation? Mm -hmm. And to what are they like? Come on. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. You see that thing? The men of this generation, they are like children. That's a drama queen for you. You see, he says, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Watch this, come on. And calling one to another say, and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Stop right there. You see that we thing? We have mourned to you Hold and on. ye have not wait. wait. Come on, come on, come on. Now you are not, you are not following me. Read that again. The book of Luke chapter 7 verse 32. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Read. And calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Read. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. So now what you want to see here is Christ is comparing the men of this generation like unto children. Their mannerism, their thought process, their character. You understand? Like unto kids. It says, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. What was Ahab doing? Ahab was, he piped unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and Naboth didn't dance to Ahab's tune. We have mourned to you and he have not wept. What was he doing? He was, he mourned unto Naboth. Naboth didn't do what? Naboth didn't weep for Ahab's mourning. That's why when he got back home now to mommy, you understand? Don't forget, Ahab is married, but he's married to his mother. Okay? Go back to 1 Kings 21, verse 4. He is not married to his literal mother, but his wife is what? Is a mother to him. You understand? 1 Kings 21, verse 4 again. First book of Kings on, wait, 21, wait, wait, verse 4. Wait. You know what? Before you get that, give me that in Proverbs 1, verse 10. So we deal with Ahab's character. Watch this. Proverbs 1, verse 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent uh, thou not. You see that thing? My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Because that's what Ahab was doing. He was enticing Naboth, the Jezreelite, our forefather. He was enticing him. Because he said, listen, I'm gonna, I'll give you a better vineyard than the one you have. Or if not, if you don't want that, if that's not the case, I will give you money instead. He was enticing him. You understand? Jump down to verse 15. The book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Read. Refrain thy foot from their path. You see that thing? That's what Naboth was doing. Naboth was applying what we're reading here. Read on, verse 16. For the feet run to evil. They, where he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He says, what? For their feet run to evil. For their feet, they run to evil. Their feet run to evil. Go ahead. And make haste to shed blood. They make haste. You know what that, you know what that part means when it says they make haste? Because they're emotional. They don't make sound decisions. They don't sit down to really ponder on a thought before they make the decision. No, no. They make haste. Because guess what? They are emotional. He's sensual. He's a drama queen. He just makes, he makes decisions on a what? On a whim. He's impulsive. That's the drama queen. You know, a drama queen is a simp. He's impulsive. He doesn't think things through. He just does them without thinking about the consequences. You understand? Read that again, verse 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For their feet run to evil. Read. And make haste to shed blood. They make haste to shed blood, meaning they don't waste time to get what they want because what? He's a simp. You understand? Jump down to verse 17 now. I mean, no, uh, chapter 4, verse 17. Proverbs 4, verse 17. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 17. You know what? Start at verse, start at verse 14. Let's start at verse 14. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Read. Right? And go not in the way of evil men. In the, and don't go in the way of evil men. Ahab was an evil man. He was an evil slick nig. Read. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. That's what, that's what our forefather did, Naboth. Read on. For they sleep not. For they sleep and, not. Come on. Except they have done this mischief. Except they have done mischief. I need you to focus. Except they have done mischief. Because guess what? Ahab was not going to relax himself until Jezebel, the leader of the house, did something about it. Go ahead. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. Unless they cause some to fall. Like who? Naboth. Go ahead. For they eat the bread of wickedness. Mm -hmm. and drink the wine of violence. You see that thing? That's what we read in Luke 8.23, when it says what? The raging of the sea. They are full of rage. You understand? A drama queen is full of rage. It's full of what? Rage, wickedness, and violence. That's the characteristics of a drama queen. You understand? Because a simp, a simp is very dangerous, by the way. A simp is dangerous. He is impulsive. He makes the type of decisions that will that will really destroy things. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. First Kings 21, verse 4. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 4. And Ahab came into the house heavy and displeased because really? of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. Read. For he, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Come on. And he laid him down upon, and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would mm. not eat bread. Now, and, and, and would eat no bread. Now watch this. You see that part right there? It says, remember now, it says, for he, he says, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Okay, so that's Naboth when he said this. And he laid him down upon his bed. Meaning what? When he arrived home, he didn't greet his wife because guess what? He's mad. He's upset. You understand? He was not given the toy. Now he's throwing a tantrum. You understand? He's a drama queen. He loves attention. He loves to be baby smothered. So it says, and he laid him down upon his bed. He went straight to bed. And turn away his face. What does that mean? You ever see somebody, they come, they, they come in the house, they just throw things on the floor, they go straight to their room, they lock it. These are, you know, these you know, my kids. And today, you know, Israelite kids, they do that. You understand? I'm going to my room. They lock it even. You can't make this stuff up. Okay? So Ahab did the same thing. Because this is a child. A drama queen is a child. So sisters... You get married to a drama queen, a simp. These are the type of things you're going to see. You're going to see these type of tantrums. He says he laid him upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. I'm full of food, yeah. When you give him food, like this person, that's exactly what they've done. Now watch. Watch this. Hmm. Verse 5 now. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Uh -huh. And said unto him, Why is this? Why is thy spirit so sad? Come on. That thou that thou eatest no bread. Now I want to I, I want you to read this. I want you to look at this thing right here. What did Jezebel say? Why is thy spirit so sad? Why is that, thy spirit so sad? Why is thy spirit so sad? What you mad for? What's wrong with you? That's what Jezebel is asking. Because guess what? You ever seen kids? Okay, I'll give an example. So 
the children, the, the way kids behave, right? They like to um, act out, throw tantrums, or they don't talk. You, you, you talk to them, they don't say nothing. Yeah, me, I corrected that thing quick, smack. Now, here's the thing. The point is this. Kids like to act out, okay? And when they do act out, they are what? They are seeking for attention. You understand? So Ahab, he's the king of Samaria. Don't forget what we read in verse 1. He's the king. He's governing all 10 tribes now, okay? Jezebel is asking, is asking him the question, why is thy spirit so sad that thou eat no bread? So now Jezebel is like, the hell is wrong with you? Why are you so mad, yet you don't even want to eat? So that's what kids do. We are ngala. So that's exactly what has happened to Ahab. That's a drama queen. A drama queen, a drama queen, we are ngala. That's what they do. They like to throw tantrums. They are emotional. You understand? It's like they are on their menstrual periods. They behave like women. Read on. Verse 6, watch this. And he said unto her. Now, this is Jezebel now. Remember, Ahab, Ahab is emotional. You understand? He's a drama queen. Okay? Now Jezebel is going to what? Jezebel is going to set things in order because Ahab is a child. He's a husband, but he's a child. Read on. And he said unto her. Read. Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite and said unto Read. him. Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. So now, what is Ahab doing here? We are pimpa. That's what he's doing. We pimpa. That's what Je just what Ahab is doing. Because Jezebel is the man of the house. She's the man. He's the woman. The roles have been reversed here. You understand? Read that again, verse 6. I want to this is the character of a, of a drama queen. You understand? The woman wears pants in the house. The woman is the one that resolves the issues. He doesn't know how to. And when he does, he, he doesn't have sense. Okay, so he behaves like a child. So the wife becomes the mother to him. You see that thing? The wife acts like a mother to him. And he looks at his wife as a, as a what? As his mother. Read that again, verse 6. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 6. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. So Nabal says, listen, I'm not going to give you my vineyard. Watch this. Let's see how Jezebel responds to this thing. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does thou now, does thou, do, does, thou does, does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. Mm -hmm. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. No, no, I want you to pronounce the right stuff here. What did, what did she say? Dost I. thou now? No, it says I. That part right there. I. You understand? Read I. that part again. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. That's some heavy stuff right there. You see that thing right there? She's like, I'm going to do this thing. But guess what? Let me show you something here. You see that part when Jezebel is asking, and Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, does thou now govern the, the kingdom of Israel? What is Jezebel doing here? Hold this. Same chapter. Jump down to verse 25. We're coming back. 25. I want to show you something. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, mm. which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up 
You see that thing whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So Jezebel, he knew, she knew how to press his buttons. Jezebel knew how to control this man with a remote. Jezebel knew how to run this man's mind. You understand? So now Jezebel, what does he do? Jezebel, she is what she is tearing him up. Go back to where he was at now. First Kings 21, verse 7 again. First book of Kings chapter 7, verse first book of Kings chapter 21, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? You see that part right uh, there? That's exactly what she's doing. She's tearing him up. I thought you were the king. I thought you ran this. I thought you were the king of Israel of the ten tribes. I thought you were the king. You're not the king. You see that? So Jezebel is stirring him up. So Jezebel knew how to stir him up. That's why she's asking the question. She's asking a rhetorical question here. This is a rhetorical question. Because we already know in verse 1 it says, he was the king of Samaria. But Jezebel is asking the question. It's a rhetorical question. What is she doing? She's stirring him up. Because this is what Jezebel was good for. Read, give me Sirach 26 verse 27. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 27. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. You see that thing? Jezebel was a loud crying woman. She had a big mouth. She, was, she had a nasty mouth. That was Jezebel. Jezebel has a nasty mouth. She don't know how to what? How to shut her mouth. You, you understand? So Ahab knew that. Ahab knew that Jezebel is a big, loud, is a, she's a loud mouthed black woman who's disrespectful. You understand? And Ahab knew that. And guess what? A simp knows that too. A simp knows that when, when my wife, when it comes to the mouth, she's unstoppable. You understand? So now he's going to let her handle the business because that's how she, that's how the whole kingdom was. The whole kingdom, the 10 tribes was not ruled by Ahab. The 10 tribes was ruled by Jezebel. Think about it. The 10 tribes during the time when Ahab was the king was ruled by Jezebel. You understand? Watch this. Jump down. Jump down to verse, because remember Jezebel said, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to get you the vineyard. You understand? Because the simp is a drama queen. So he likes, he loves it when there's drama. Because guess what? He could have just got home and continued about the business. Could he not? But because he loves drama, he's addicted to drama. Guess where she, what, guess the way he behaved, he knew that Jezebel is going to be activated by this. So he activated Jezebel because he loves drama. He can't help himself. Okay, jump down to verse 10 now. Now Jezebel, this is how Jezebel is going to get things done. Read verse 10. Jezebel is going to basically write letters in Ahab's name and hire hitmen to take Naboth out. Read verse 10. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 10. Read. And said two men, sons of Belial. Belial. And said two men, sons of Belial, before mm -hmm. him, to bear witness against him, saying, Read. Thou, did, thou didst blaspheme God and the king. Read. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. So, so you see that thing? Now Jezebel is hiring hitmen. He is hiring hitmen to kill Naboth for his vineyard that he has. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 27, verse 25. You see what Jezebel did? Because what we read in Sarah 26, verse 27, is as a loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive, to drive away the enemy. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 20, Deuteronomy 27, verse 25.
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 25. No, no, 27. 27, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 25. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say amen. You see what Jezebel was doing? She was breaking this law. He says, Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say amen. We agree to this thing. You understand? We agree. You know what? Read verse 24 and 25 together. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 24. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbors secretly, and all the people shall say amen. That's what Jezebel was doing. Jezebel hired two men to go out there to what? To, to, to turn the people against Naboth. So that Naboth now, the, people, the people's mind, they is kindling fire against Nabal by the people. You understand? In Ahab's name. Read. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say amen. Come on. Cursed be he that taketh the reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say amen. Because Naboth was innocent. Naboth was innocent. You understand? Now, go back to First Kings. Okay? Go back to First Kings, chapter 21, verse 10. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 10. And, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, thou, did bless, thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Jump down to verse 13 now. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 13. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and set before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the, presence of, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. You see what they did to Naboth? Because now everybody, guess what? They are against Naboth because of Jezebel. And who's the culprit behind this? Ahab, that emotional bundle of something. You understand? Ahab was an evil nig. Ahab was an evil nig. And he knew that Jezebel is the devil the Bible speaks of. You understand that? Come on, verse 16. And it came to pass. You know what? When Ahab... Wait, 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 wait. Um... Read verse 15 again. No, no, read verse 13 again. Something I missed. First book of Kings 21 verse 13. And they came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. So now Jezebel had, had Naboth killed, okay? He hired hitmen to go and kill this brother. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. 1 Kings 18, verse 1. Remember, Jezebel and Ahab, they think the same way. And they, they behave the same way. Jezebel and Ahab, they think the same way. Whatever Jezebel says, Ahab is saying the same thing and vice versa. Go ahead. First Kings 18 verse 1, come on. First book of Kings chapter 18 verses 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the 30th saying, 
Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Rain. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. So there was a there was a famine in Samaria. Go ahead. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Mm -hmm. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. So now Obadiah is not Obadiah that we read about in the book of Obadiah, but this brother's name also was Obadiah. He was working in Ahab's house. Read on. As he was the governor of his house. Read on. For it was so. When Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. When Jezebel did what? When Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. You see what Jezebel was doing? Jezebel was killing the prophets. And who really wanted to kill the prophets? Ahab wanted to do it. Because Naboth was a prophet. You understand? Yeah, Naboth was a prophet. All Israel are prophets. You understand that? Read that again. Verse 4. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 4. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. You see what Obadiah did? Obadiah was what? He was hiding the prophets from Jezebel. Because of what? Because of Ahab's tantrums. Because Ahab, threw, he threw tantrums. He came into the house, he threw tantrums. And don't forget, why is Jezebel moving like this? I'll show you. Give me the book of Micah real quick. Micah 7, because they have p their pillow talk. You see, the drama queen, drama queen, they love pillow talk. Okay, give me Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7 and verse, verse 5. Micah 7 verse 5. This is what a drama queen does. He does this stuff. The book of Micah chapter 7 verse 12. No, verse 5. Micah 7 verse 5. Come on. The book of Micah chapter 7 verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Ray? Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, keep the doors of thy mouth, meaning shut the hell up, from her that lieth in thy bosom. But the drama queen is not like that. A drama queen likes to gossip. A drama queen, they like to gossip. They are moody. They are emotional. They love to gossip. And when something goes wrong, guess where they run to mommy? Who's mommy? The wife. That's what Ahab was doing. Whenever something went wrong, happened in, in Ahab's life that he didn't like, he, wasn't, he was unhappy, guess what he did? He ran to his mother, meaning his wife, Jezebel. That's the character of his drama queen. He's a simp. Okay, read that again. Verse 5. The book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Mm -hmm. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You see that thing? That's the commandment right there. So now, the reason why Ahab, the reason why Jezebel was killing the prophets is because of what? Ahab running his big mouth. Because Ahab was a what? He was a drama queen. You understand? Go back to First Kings now, chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21 and verse, verse 15. First book of Kings chapter 21, verses 15. And the Lord said unto him, No, no. Go. Verse 15, 1 5. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 15. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth. Arise, that again? take possession. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 15. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned, 
and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So now, what Jezebel had done, Jezebel has accomplished the mission, is to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Remember in verse 7, it says, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. I'm going to do it. You understand? I'm going to do this thing. Because you need to read between the lines. Okay? Remember, it says, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? He asked, she asked the question. Because what was she? She was stirring him up. What do you think Ahab did? Because you need to read between the lines here. He says, arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. I'm going to get it for you. So while he, while he arose and sat down to eat, where was Jezebel? Think about it. Where was Jezebel sitting at? They were all sitting at one table. Jezebel shogolosing him. Guess what he was doing? He was, he, he, while he was eating, you understand? Because now mommy told him you can eat now, my son. Now he's sitting down, he's eating. Be merry, be happy. What was Jezebel doing? As he as Jezebel was stirring him up, guess what? How how would Ahab respond? What would Ahab's response be? Ahab will be in a situation where now he's gonna spill out how he feels. He's gonna spill to Jezebel how he really feels about what Naboth did. You understand that? So now as he's spewing out all these emotions that he's pushing out, these tantrums, Jezebel is plotting and planning. Hmm, okay, I'm going to get it. You just sit down, baby. I got you. I'm going to go out. I'm going to do what I have to. So because he said, arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. Because where was Je Jezebel was right there with him. A drama queen, that's exactly what he likes. He like a drama queen likes, a drama queen likes the sister to be his mother. Because what happens to children when they throw tantrums? They run from they run away from home. You understand? The mother would be going from house to house looking for the boy. You see that thing? And guess what? Magangala, because it says these be they who separate themselves. Don't lose the point now. These be they who separate themselves. So Magangala, when he runs away, he switches off his phone, he doesn't answer your calls when you call him and all of that. Guess what? He wants to be what? He wants somebody to go out looking for him. Like a mother would look, be looking for his child, her child that is lost, that is gone missing. That's the mind of a drama queen. He's a, he's a small boy, he's a child. You see that that's how they behave because they're seeking for mommy's attention. You understand? Um, read verse 15 once more, one, once, once more again. Verse 15 again. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 15. Read. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which mm -hmm. he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. Come on. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. You see that thing? Because Jezebel got the mission done. Read on, watch this. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Read. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Come on. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. So now the Lord is, is revealing to Elijah what had gone down. Remember, Elijah is not there. The Lord is, is giving, is revealing. Give me that in, give me that in, uh, give me that in Amos 3 verse 7. Give me the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Watch this. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Hmm, these pages. Amos 3 verse 7, read that. You know, start with 6. Hmm. 
the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Really? Shall they be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? You see that thing? He says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? What is the trumpet today? The Bible. Go ahead. Shall they be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Watch this. Verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Mm -hmm. But he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. You see what the Lord did? That's how Elijah knew. Because the Lord, the Most High revealed this secret, and this secret unto Elijah. The Lord told Elijah what Ahab had done and his demon wife Jezebel. What they've done unto that innocent brother Naboth. Okay, go ahead. Go back. First Kings 21. First Kings 21. Verse 18 again. First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 18. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. Read. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the wounds of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy wound, even thine. You see what the Lord is telling, is telling, um, is, is telling Elijah to tell Ahab. You understand? Come on, watch this. May I read again properly, sir? Read verse, read verse 20. Come on, read verse 20. First book, Kings chapter 21, verse 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? Stop right and, there. What did, wh hold on. What did Ahab say? And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? You see, you see how Ahab looked at Elijah? He saw Elijah as his enemy. Guess what? A drama queen, a simp, you understand? Because he's, he's what? He's, the coochie is running, is running his mind. You understand? The juices that are flowing in his mind is the coochie juice. You understand? I'm a, I'm a prophet. I paint with words. Read the part again, verse 20. First book of Kings of 21, verse 20. Read. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? Has thou, find, has thou found me, O mine enemy? So he's referring to Elijah as his enemy. Because guess what? What was Elijah coming with? Elijah was coming with the laws. Elijah was coming with correction. Elijah was coming to, what, to set things in order. Because a drama queen, a simp, hates the prophets of the Most High. Even up in here, you can be a simp and you hate when we get on the sisters. You know why? Because you are a what? You see the man of the Most High God as an enemy. Guess what? We correcting a brother. You be sitting there. The matter has nothing to do with you, but you are offended for the brother. What are you? You are a simp. You are a drama queen. You don't know what this is about. Read again, verse twenty. First book of Kings, chapter twenty-one, verse twenty. And Ahab said to Elijah, "Hast thou found me, O my enemy?" And he answered. I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. You see what Elijah is telling Ahab? I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Remember, notice even Elijah didn't even ask him, why are you looking at me as an enemy? Watch this. Give me Micah. Micah 2 verse 8. Micah chapter 2 verse 8. Watch this. Elijah was not even surprised that he does what he's saying. Micah 2 verse 8, read that. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 8. Even of late my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men are from all. 
Because what? This goes into what? Our people robbing their own people because they've risen up against them as an enemy. That's why even of late, read that part again. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. You see that thing? That's what Eli that's what Ahab, that's how Ahab looked at Elijah. Ahab looked at Elijah as an enemy. That's the mind of a simp. The mind of a simp, they hate the prophets of the Most High because they hate correction. Because when the prophets, when the prophets bring the scriptures out, they are always offended at what's coming out of this Bible. They are always offended. That's the mind of a drama queen. You understand? Read that again, verse 8. First, the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 8. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Mm -hmm. You pull off the robe with a garment from them that pass by securely as men of us from war. You see that thing? It says, you pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from war. So meaning what? They be taking our people's possessions, clothes in this instance, because it's against the law to do that. You understand? Let's go back. Go back to First Kings chapter 21, verse 20 again. First book of Kings chapter 21, verse 20. Read. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me? Has thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. Give me 1 Kings 18, verse 11 now. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 11. 1 book of Kings chapter 18, verse 11. And now thou sayest, go, tell thy brother, behold, Elijah no, is here. No, 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 no. Read verse 11 again. Come on, you are skipping stuff here. The first book of Kings chapter 18, verse 11. And now thou sayest, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. You see that thing? It says, now tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So Elijah is speaking to who? Obadiah. You understand? Come on. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I, I am gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whither I know not. Uh -huh. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy, but I, thy servants, fear the Lord from my youth. So now Obadiah is telling, is telling Elijah, listen, yes, you are telling me to go and call Ahab. I'm going to go and do it, but don't disappear. Because what, what if I go to call him and the spirit of the Lord come and whisk you away somewhere? You understand? So now Elijah is going to what? He's going to assure Obadiah. Say, I'm not going nowhere. I'm, you're going to find me right here. Go ahead. And he said, what if I... No, verse 13. Come on. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 13. Was it not told? Was it not told, my Lord, what I did? When Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? You see what Jezebel How? was doing? Jezebel was killing the prophets. How did Jezebel kill the prophets? He hired hitmen to kill the prophets. You understand? Come on. How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by 50 in a cave and really? fed them with bread and water. So now he's rehearsing what happened, what Jezebel did. He's telling Elijah, come on. And now thou sayest, go. Tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. Come on. And Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So he said, Elijah is assuring Obadiah, he said, listen, I'm not going nowhere. I'll be right here. Go and call your Lord and bring him down here. Go ahead. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Read. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, mm -hmm. Art thou he that troubleth Israel? You see how he, you see, let's listen to the mindset of this little nig. He's saying, Art thou he 
that troubles Israel? How is Elijah troubling Israel? By bringing correction? By delivering the, the word of the Most High God? That's the same thing today. We go to camp, we teach our people. Uh, drama queens, that's how they see it. We are troubling the people. That's how they think. You understand? That's a drama queen because that's a simp. When we correct the sisters, they be jumping up. No, sister, you know, that's the mind of a simp. I don't know how many times I've seen it at camp when we be correcting the sister. Here comes a, here comes a drama queen. He be defending the sister against what's coming out. That's exactly what Ahab was doing. You understand? Because Ahab was a drama queen. Okay, read verse 17 again. First book of Kings chapter 18, verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Remember in chapter 21, he is calling Elijah what? Mine enemy. Okay, read on. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed ba Balaam. Balaam. Yes, thou hast followed Balaam because Jezebel, she worshipped idols. Jezebel was an idolater, so was Ahab. That's why they were, that house was so confused. Up was down, left was right. Okay? It says, but thou and thy father's house. So Elijah is checking him. You and your father's house, you are the one that is troubling Israel. Okay, come on. Verse 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 uh -huh. which eat at Jezebel's table. You see that thing? Because Jezebel has a, had a support group. Guess what? Drama queens, they also have support groups. The drama queens, they all flock together. They walk together. A drama queen always has a support group. So Jezebel, they, just like the same way Jezebel had 400, it says 450, okay, and 400. It says, and the prophets of the groves, 400. So he had, he had what, 800, she had 850 men that Ed had it, and that ate at her table. He says, which ate at Jezebel's table? The simps. Jezebel wasn't followed by wise men. Jezebel was followed by simps. Guess what? A drama queen also, he's followed by what? Simps. That's why when you see the life of a drama queen, you understand? What does he do? He's emotional. He's always having nigger moments all the time. That's a drama queen. A drama queen always experiences nigger moments. That's how he is. A drama queen, he always has nigger moments without fail. You watch that series, The Boondocks? Uh -huh. That's a drama queen right there. That's a simp. You understand? They don't know how to resolve conflict. That's a drama queen. That's why they, they will, that's why I mentioned earlier, they will drain your life. They will drain your, they will quench your spirit. Because there's always drama with them. There's never peace. There's never, it's never simple with them. It's always complicated all the time. Something simple will be complexified. Read verse, read verse 19 again. First book of Kings, chapter 18, verse 19. Now, therefore, Send and gather all and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, Baal, 450. And the prophets of the crows, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Which eat at Jezebel's table. So what I want to show you is the character, the character of a simp. One of which he is a drama queen. There's always drama. I mean, just, just look at this. Now Elijah has to be called in. The Lord has to bring Elijah and say, go out there and resolve this mess. 
You understand? Because there's drama again. There's drama again in Israel. Go and resolve it. Because the drama queen is addicted to drama. He's not satisfied where there's no confusion. You understand? Watch this. Go back to um, Jude now. Go back to Jude, verse 18 again. Jude, verse 18. Let's read that again. The book of Jude, verse 18. How that they told you they should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. That's what Ahab was like. Ahab was a drama queen. You understand? He was making mockery of Elijah. Oh, my enemy. Uh, is it you that is troubling Israel? You see that thing? So just listen to the speech. Listen to his speech. He's what? His talk is without sense. He doesn't what? He doesn't filter his, his, his words with the word of God. He doesn't do that. He doesn't have a filter. That was the mind state of Ahab. That's the mind state of a what? Of a drama queen. Read that again, verse 18. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 18. How that they told you they, how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time who should mm -hmm. walk after their own lusts. No, no, come on. You are rushing and you are skipping words here. Come on, what's going on? Do you have your glasses on? Yes, sir. Okay, read that again. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 18. How that they told you they should be mockers in the last time. Read. Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Because Ahab was an idolater. That's why says the, uh, Jezebel was worshipping Balaam. So Jezebel and Ahab was one flesh. So the, when Jezebel was on her menstrual cycles, guess what Ahab was? Ahab also was on his menstrual cycles. Go ahead, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. You see that thing? These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. They don't have sense in their minds. So the reason why they separate themselves is because they are offended. You understand? That's the, that's the biggest motivator. They are offended. Offended at what? They are offended at things that are said to them. And it's not things that are what? It's not offensive things. But he's going to find it offensive. That's the drama queen. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 6. Matthew 11, verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. It's very clear, simple, straight to the point. But guess what? The hypocrite will be offended the head. Because what? When the scriptures come out, when correction comes out, when sense, when something that is what sense comes out, they're going to find it offensive. They are moody. They are, their mind is like a what? It's like a cartwheel. They are subject to change. They are given to change. They change as the moon. You see the moon changing cycles? Guess what? The hypocrite is like that. The drama queen is like that. Because when they, they are fueled by drama, everything that they do, they are fueled by drama. That's why the Lord is saying they are filled with rage. That's why they always have nigger moments all the time without fail. There's always nigger moments that they have. You understand? Okay. Um, go back to Sirach now, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 15. You know what? Before you get me that, give me John 6. Hmm. John chapter 6. Let me see what verse I want. I didn't write this down. John chapter 6 and verse... Hmm. It's in the 60s.
Yeah, John chapter 6. Start of verse 59. You know what? Mm. Let's start at verse... Verse 52. We're going to start right there. John 6, verse 52. Let's start there. John 6, 52. Come on, come on. The book of John chapter 6, verse 52. Mm -hmm. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Because remember, Christ spoke unto them in parables, right? Give me, give me Matthew 13, verse 10. Matthew 13, verse 10. We're coming back here. The book of Matthew. Chapter 13. Verse 10. Read. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? In what? In parables. In parables. Why you speak to them in parables? Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. To them, it is not given. You see that thing? It says, because it is given unto them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, meaning to the masses, is not given. It is not given to them to know the mysteries because Christ was setting order. He was setting up a leadership structure. You understand? That's why, he, that's why he spoke like that to them. Now go back to John 6, verse 52 again. The book of John. Come on, chapter don't six. close the chapters. Don't close the chapter. Why are you closing the chapters? Okay, come on. John 6, verse 52. Read that. The book of John chapter 6 verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Go ahead, because guess what? He was speaking unto them in parables. Read. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So he is speaking. This is a hip talk. Okay, come on. Come on. What's so going on in the background? What's going on? You are distracting me. Come on. This verse 54 again. Book of John, chapter 6, verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The last day, we are in the last day right now. The Lord is raising us up in the last days. Come on. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He says, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So what is Christ going into? Christ is going, um, he's going into what? He's going, his body represents what? The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. When he says, eat his flesh and drink his blood, meaning what? You're going to accept the sacrifice that he will make, he will make and the blood that he will spill will do what will wash away our sins to usher us into the new covenant. Come on. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Read. As the living father hath sent me and I live by the father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. You see that thing? It says, as the living father hath sent me, as I live by the Father, because he's telling you, we serve a living God. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Go ahead. This is that bread which came down from heaven. You see what he's saying? Read that again. The book of John chapter 6 verse 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and that did. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So he's talking about himself. It is, this is that bread which came down from heaven. Now he's speaking over their heads now. Okay, come on. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Now, you notice in verse 52, he says, the Jews strove among themselves. 
They were, stri they were striving among themselves. That's the same, same thing we experienced when we had camp. People come to camp, they stand in front of us. When the scriptures come out, they be arguing among themselves. Okay, come on. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? You see what they're saying? This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? That's why Christ said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Read that again, verse 60. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Read. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said they did them, what? That his disciples murmured at it. So the disciples were complaining about the way that Christ taught. That's the same thing today. We teach in the spirit of Christ. Our people, they hate, they despise the way that the scriptures come out. He says, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, they were murmuring based on the way he was teaching. He said unto them, what did he say? He said unto them, does this offend you? You see what he's asking them? Are you offended by what I'm saying? Does it make you mad? Are you going to throw a tantrum? Are you going to cause drama because you don't get it? That's, that's how Christ rolled. Christ rolled like this. Because he knew there are those that don't believe what he's saying. Read it again, verse 61. The book of John, chapter 6, verse, verse 61. Read. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? Does this offend you? Go ahead. Because get what? remember, remember, hold on, remember. It says, go back to Sirach 32, verse 15. So we don't lose the thought because I know some of you have forgotten already. Sirach 32, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus of 32, verse 15. He that seeketh the law shall be filled therewith. But the hypocrites will be offended thereat. You see that thing? So they were filled with hypocrisy. That's why they were offended by what he was saying. Because many of them did not believe the truth. You understand? They didn't believe it. Okay, go back to John 6. John 6, verse 61 again. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this, does this offend you? Now jump down to verse 64. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. You see that part right there? But there are some of you that believe not. Because the hypocrite is offended because they don't believe what's coming out. They don't believe that what's coming out is the truth, although they are cut by what's coming out. That's why they will be what? They are tossed. They are unstable. You understand? They are like a ship in a storm. Because the reason why they behave or they are out of character, out of the spirit, is because they are getting cut by what's coming out. Babe, you remember you said such and such and such? What happens? It's been two years already. You understand? What's going on with this thing? What's happening with such? You remember you promised me such and such. He just gets angry and emotional because he doesn't want to own up to the fact that he's a dreamer and he's not realistic and he does not want. He's lazy. He does not want to apply himself. So when now the wife comes in and says, listen, but you said you're going to do X, such and such and such. On this, uh, uh, by the way, there's no deadlines. You understand? It's open-ended. So when the wife comes in and says, but you said X, Y, and Z, he will be offended and start an argument just so he doesn't have to deal with the things he said. You understand? That's a drama queen. And he's going to start an argument. You understand? That argument is going to end ugly. Something small. It will end like a big blow-up. You understand? Read verse 64 again. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and mm -hmm. who should betray him. You see that thing? So the hypocrite that is offended, guess what? He is a Judas. Because he's going to draw, he's going to leave that marriage at the drop of a whim because he's emotional. He throws tantrums. He's not a man, he's a child. 
So now when you show him things that are in the scriptures, because the script, this Bible is alive. When it comes out, it chops, it cuts. So when, he's up, when, he, when he gets cut, he's upset, he's mad. You understand? He throws even more tantrums. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to betray the son of man. He will betray you. He will drop you like a hot potato. He will drop you like a hot potato. Because, and who should betray him? Didn't Judas betray Christ? Hold this. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23. Watch this. We read this all the time. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, mm -hmm. that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. With the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was what? Betrayed. In which he was betrayed, took bread. Read verse 23 one more again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Because a drama queen, he is a Judas. He will betray you. He will, he will drop his brothers and sisters like a hot potato because a drama queen is selfish. A drama queen, he doesn't think about the nation. A drama queen, guess what? A drama queen hates his own people. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me 1 Maccabees 11, 21 real quick. 1 Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21. First book of Maccabees. You're not paying attention. 1 Maccabees 11, 21. First book of Maccabees, chapter 11, verses 21. Okay, I don't understand. I don't understand because when I call the scripture, you are quiet and then you page, you are paging. So I don't understand what is happening between you receiving the scripture and you, you actually going to the scripture. There's a gap in between. Okay, come on, you are messing me up. That means the editing is going to be very difficult for it to edit these videos. Okay? Read that again. First Maccabees 11, 21. I need you to focus. Come on. First book of Maccabees 11, verse 21. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. You see that part when... right there? Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. Because a drama queen, they hate their own people. They despise their own. You understand? They hate their own people. That's a drama queen for you. He hates himself and he hates his own people too. That's why he's always find, he's find everything that is coming out of the Bible offensive. He's always offended. And guess what? He's offended. Is, is this, his state of mind, his state of mind, guess what? What is the next thing he will do? He will betray you. Yes, he will. He will betray you. He will sell you to, to what? To the other nations. Because what? Because he's upset. Because he's what? He's throwing a tantrum. That's the mind state of a drama queen. And the drama, drama queen is very dangerous. Yeah, he's weak, but he's dangerous too. So don't think that a drama queen is weak, but he's dangerous. Why? Because he, he's impulsive. That's why sisters that are involved with drama queens, they are emotionally abused, physically abused. You understand that? Emotionally, spiritually, and physically abused, and financially abused. Because this brother, right, he's unstable. He's unstable like water. Give me that in Genesis 49, verse 3. Because what did Reuben do? Reuben betrayed his father when he slept with his father's concubine. Watch what the Bible says about this thing. Genesis 49 verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 3. Reuben 
Thou art my firstborn, mm -hmm. my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Next verse. Unstable as water. You see that thing? It's as unstable as water. Read. Thou shalt not excel. Come on. Because thou went up to thy father's bed. Thou wentest, thou, come on. Thou wentest up to thy father's bed. You see, a drama queen, he is unstable. He will betray you. They will betray you at the drop of a dime. That's the, mind, that's the mindset of a drama queen. A drama queen is not loyal. The drama queen is very disloyal. He's selfish. He only thinks about himself. You understand? Read that again. Verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. Uh -huh. Unstable as water. Read. Thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not excel. Because when because he doesn't thou... excel. Hold on. When a drama queen does not excel or succeed, he blames others for his mishaps. He will blame you why he doesn't move on. Why he does not progress in his life. You the reason why he doesn't progress. Genesis 49. Read that again verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Unstable as water. Read. Thou shalt not excel. Mm -hmm. Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. You see that thing? So that's what Reuben did. He says unstable as water. Because the, but the key I, wanted, I want you brothers and sisters to see here says, it says, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then, then defilest thou it. He betrayed his father, Jacob. He betrayed our forefather. You understand? So now go back. John 6, verse 65. The book of John, chapter 6. Was the 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come you unto me. Start, start at verse 65. Start at verse 65. Yes, sir. Then 64. 64. Start at verse 64. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 64. Mm -hmm. But there are some of you that believe not. Really? For Jesus, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who should betray him. So now you need to, you, you really need to meditate on this verse, right? That's a heavy verse right here. It says, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not and who should betray him. Hold this. Give me the book of First Peter. Give me First Peter 1. Let's start at verse 10. First Peter, because the apostle Peter, he addressed this thing. First Peter 1 verse 10. Come on. First book of Peter, Peter 1 verse 10. Come on. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Read. Searching what? Or oh, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. The what? Or oh, what manner of time the spirit of Christ, the which spirit was in of them. Christ, which was in them. Who's the them? The prophets. The spirit of Christ, which was in them, did what? Which was in them did signify. Come when on. it testified before the sufferings of Christ. No, no. And made... Okay, wait, wait. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. I need you to pay attention, bro. Come on. So now what you want to see here is the spirit of Christ is in the prophets. The spirit of Christ is in the prophets. And because of that, go back to John 6 verse 64 now. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 64. But they are some of you that believe not. There are some of you that don't believe this truth. Go ahead. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not uh -huh. and who should betray him. 
So you mean to tell me the spirit of Christ, which is now in the pro, which is in the not now, it's always been in the prophets. You see, the, the prophets don't know as well. <laughs> the prophets know who, who, who are they that are going to betray the betrayers. The spirit, the, listen, the spirit of Christ. Listen, we are moving in the spirit of Christ. We can, I can tell this brother right here, hmm, this brother right here, this brother right here is a ticking time bomb, this one. You can tell this one right here, hmm. But what do I know? I don't know nothing. I'm just a, yeah, I don't, I'm just a nigga with the Bible. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, read on, verse 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. You see that thing? It says, no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. That means what you read in 1 John 2, when it says they went out from us, that means that one was not given of the father. That was the gift of Satan. Go ahead. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Read it again. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You see that? It says many. It says from that time, many of his disciples went back. Where did they go back to? In the world. You understand? Like Tyrus did when he, when he abandoned the apostle Paul. And walk no more with him. They walk no more with Christ. Read on. Verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve. Will ye also go away? You see Christ wasn't focused on those that left. He asked the one that would remain. He says. Are you going to go too? You understand? Jump down. Jump down to verse. 69 now. Watch this. And we believe. And are sure that thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. The son of the living God. Go ahead. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is the devil? You see what he's saying? <laughs> There's some, some heavy stuff right here. He says, Christ he knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Because those that don't believe, those are betrayers. They don't believe the gospel. They, will, they are disloyal. Those are drama queen. A drama queen is disloyal. You can't put anything on him. A drama queen is disloyal. They will drop you like a hot potato and move on to something else. You understand? Because they hate and despise order and structure. That is one of the motivating factors why a drama queen will leave this truth. You understand? Because he's a simp. He's a child. Okay, come on. Verse 71. The book of John chapter 6, verse 71. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Mm. Read. For he, for he, for he it was that no, no. should betray him. For he, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Remember, Judas Iscariot, he was performing miracles. You understand? He walked on water. Guess what? It says, for he it was that should betray him and being one of the 12. He was one of the 12 disciples. He walked with Christ. You understand? He walked with Christ. So guess what? A drama queen, these are the characteristics of a drama queen right here. So sisters, when you're proving a brother, you need to inquire about these things to find out what type of spirit he is moving in. The only way to do that, you need the word of God to do that thing, to bring that little, that, that slick nig, that nig that hiding in there, you need to pop them out. And the only way you can pop the nig out, you need to read the Bible and apply and prove him by what is written. You understand? Now, go back to Sirach 32 verse 15. I'm almost done. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verses 16. No, 15. Sarah 32, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 15. He that seeketh the law 
shall be filled therewith. But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. You see that thing? But the hypocrite will be offended thereat. Chapter 33, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 2. A wise man hated not the law. But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. You see that thing? That's what we read in Luke. He that is an hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. Jump down to verse 5 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 5. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel, and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. You see that thing? Because this man, this brother, right, he is unstable. You can't trust him for nothing. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 11. Matthew 5, verse 11. Let's read that. This is what Christ said. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. You see that thing? Because guess what? The reason why he will be offended. Remember what Christ said in Matthew 11, verse 6. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So here says, blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Because guess what? A drama queen, he is filled with what? He is filled with revenge, with spite. He wants to spite you. He wants to make you feel pain like he's feeling pain. Why is he feeling the pain? Because correction came out to be what? To be held accountable so he can change his evil ways. He's not going to do that, but he's going to revile you. He's going to speak evil of you. He's going to do what? He's going to say things to hurt you intentionally. You understand why? Because he cannot take the correction. Verse 11 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now read on. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. You see what he's for saying? It says, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Meaning what? In Joe, get the kingdom. Read on. For so persecuted, they the prophets which were before you. Meaning what? The same thing that happened back then to the prophets, the same thing that's going to happen today, this day, in these last days. Read. Ye are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. But if the salt have lost its favor, wherewith shall it be salted? Come on. It is then good for nothing. It is then forth. It is no, no, come on. It is then forth good for nothing. So the Lord is saying, You lost, you are the salt of the earth, but the salt of the earth has lost his what? His flavor, his seasoning agent. He said, It is then forth good for nothing. So a drama queen, he's good for nothing because he everything he does is not to benefit the nation. Is to what is to fulfill his ungodly lusts. Read on. It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the under foot of men. Read verse 18 again. I don't know what you are doing. There's pages being paged out here, but you are looking at the chapter. Come on, you're messing me up, man. Verse 18 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith uh -huh. shall it be salted? Read. It is thenceforth good for nothing. Come on. But, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You see that thing? But to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. That is what the Lord is saying. A drama queen is good for nothing. But it says, but to be cast out, they must be cast out. There must not be a, a, a drama queen, a hypocrite. If they cannot change that spirit, they cannot be among us. And to be trodden under foot of men. Because they don't care. They don't care. They don't, they don't care about the impact. They, they, they don't care about the consequences of their actions and how they impact others. They just do it because they are filled with what ungodly lusts. That's what that's the mind state, the mind frame of a what of a drama queen, a simp. You understand? 
So I'm going to end the class right here. All right. I'm going to end the class right here. Um, let's get 1 Corinthians 11, 23. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sub saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.